Welcome back to the Get Unstuck and On Target podcast. I'm Mike O'Neill with Bench Builders, and we specialize in helping owners build the teams and the processes that they need to grow their business. Joining me today from Houston, Texas is Kimberly Smith. Kimberly is a mindset and resilience coach and founder of Encompass Coaching. She was born in New York, but proud to now be a Houstonian. Kimberly is a truth seeker, a mental health advocate, yogi, and mother. But it's through coaching, speaking, and writing that Kimberly helps busy professionals and entrepreneurs stop stressing and start focusing so they can flourish within their careers, families, businesses, and relationships. Welcome, Kimberly. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. It's good to be here. Well, I'm glad you're with us because I think you're going to bring to this conversation a perspective that I think our listeners will enjoy hearing. Namely, prior to becoming a coach, Kimberly spent over 10 years in corporate talent acquisition for a wide variety of industries. Now, talent acquisition, that's a fancy word for... (laughs) Recruiting and staffing, basically. (laughs) Yeah. You know, basically helping people into new career opportunities and being an extension of the hiring that goes on in any given company. Well, why don't we start with that? You found yourself in a corporate recruiting role, meaning you're reaching out. Were you recruiting primarily professionals? Yes. So I was actually, I got started working for a recruiting firm and we were working actually, it was a boutique firm that specialized in energy trading and risk management. Wow. So I was actually right out of the gates. I was recruiting, you know, commodity traders and credit risk professionals and just people involved in mostly mostly upstream, midstream, and downstream energy. So it was, it was definitely a learning <laughs> process for sure. Now you've been doing what you're doing now, coaching for about how long? About three, four years, actually. So I started my business three years ago, kind of started the pivot probably closer to four years ago. But yeah, that has also been a learning curve, just diving into a new industry and trying to take all the skills that I used in corporate and really apply them in a new way. So I hope in our time together, we can talk not only about your experience as a recruiter, but the transition and that pivot that you made reference to. Let's go back to recruiting. It seems as if we're recording this podcast in late October, and we therefore are very familiar with this term, the great resignation. And people are basically choosing to leave. Kimberly, when you think about your days as a corporate recruiter, it seems to me that you have kind of an interesting role there. You are representing the company, but you're also trying to make a connection with a candidate because this candidate might not know anything about the company unless you share that with them initially. Did you find that building that type of trusting relationship was important to your role as a recruiter? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, changing jobs is one of the most vulnerable things that we can do. It's one of the biggest life transitions that we actually go through. And when you think about it, I mean, it, it, it makes sense. We, we all want to do meaningful work. We all want to work. We all want to live and work in healthy environments, right? We all want to be paid what we're worth and, and have the flexibility to not only do that meaningful work, but enjoy the lives that we work so hard for. And I know you mentioned the great resignation that's happening right now. And you know, for me being on the recruiting end of things, it was always so important that I believed in the organization that I was recruiting for and that they did have a really unique, supportive working culture because throughout my tenure, that's really what people wanted. You know, I saw people take less money so that they could work in a healthier environment with more flexibility. Right. And now I think with this pandemic and COVID-19 and everybody just reassessing their life, their values, what they really want to spend their time on and how they want to live. People are really demanding that, you know, that's why they're leaving. It's not necessarily the money. It's the culture and the leadership that 
seems to really be lacking in a lot of these organizations. Kimberly, you have a very natural way about you. It seems to me that it it's natural for you to engage in your recruiting days a candidate. You may not have had the advantage of Zoom or its equivalent then. Yeah, we used Skype, you know, that was kind of our Zoom back then. And we did do some interviews via Skype, which was really great. You know, we recruited from all over and that that's always really helpful. I mean, seeing a candidate and really getting to know, you know, just their body language and, and seeing their facial expressions. I mean, it does. You definitely are able to build a connection better with a, a candidate that way, for sure. Kimberly, as you know, our listeners are leaders. They're decision makers. And as such, they have to move kind of quickly. Mm. But building a quick rapport with someone is important in today's fast paced environment. What have you found works best to establish that rapport as quickly and as genuinely as possible? Honesty, absolute honesty and transparency, which I think is really hard for a lot of people, right? I mean, we're very keen to acknowledge all of the really good things about an organization that we work for, right? So if we are a leader within an organization and we're trying to build our team, obviously we wanna promote all of those wonderful things. On the flip side of it, I think that it would be naive to think that any organization is perfect, right? I've worked for some amazing organizations and even the best of the best, you know, there were, there were blind spots that they had. There were areas that they needed to improve upon and maybe allocate more resources for. And for me, you know, whether I was looking for a job or if it was a candidate, I think people really always respect the honesty, right? That, hey, we're not perfect. These, this is what we do really, really well. This is our vision for the future. This is what we're really working on. These are the steps that we're taking to make those aspirations a reality for our organization and for our team members as well. I think that goes a lot further than just avoiding those conversations or pretending as if they don't exist. How have you found honesty and transparency? How has that served you as you considered this transition to the role you're in now? And how might those be helping you in your current role? Yeah, I mean, well, picking a life coach is definitely a big decision and people really want to feel like they are connected to you. They want, I mean, just like picking a therapist or even picking a doctor, right? You you have to feel that you're understood. And so as far as honesty and transparency, I mean, people can go to my website and read my full story. I lay it all out there. I lay out the problems that I had in corporate, you know, even just as a team member, also the challenges that came up in my marriage. And there is more to that too, that I plan on, on divulging maybe in a, maybe in a book down the line. But yeah, I mean, I think admitting that, hey, I've struggled with mental health. I've struggled with my anxiety. Motherhood has not been easy on me. Even being a collaborative partner in my marriage wasn't wasn't super easy. I, you know, we're kind of thrown into these new adult roles with, you know, no guidebook, <laughs> no, no mentoring, <laughs> no, no anything, right? We have to just figure it out through our experience and and making mistakes. And I've made a lot of mistakes and, you know, I don't, I don't regret any of them. I, I think that they've made me who I am. And by sharing those stumbling points, I think it's really, it's been a, a vulnerable connection for me and my clients and anybody that I work with, which is great, you know, whether they become a client or not, I think just connecting with other humans and kind of having that realization that we're all, we're all going through a lot of the same experiences even if it doesn't seem like it. You know, we were talking about COVID-19 and what's interesting about that is that it's an experience that the entire world has and continues to be experiencing together. Right. And it has been horrific on so many different levels. But if there is a silver lining, the silver lining is that this has really made discussing mental health, something that people might be a little more open to do 
because it seems as if very few people have been immune from how just devastating this has been and how it's radically changed. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing things in the same way? Are you seeing that the stigma of mental health might be a little bit less now than it was, say, 18 to 20 months ago? Yes. I think I think people are much more willing to talk about it. That is different than actually seeking help for it, mm. right? I think that that's where we still have quite a bit um, of terrain to cover, right? I think that people are very open to saying, yeah, I'm stressed out. Yeah, I'm anxious, right? I don't know that they actually connect that back and put it and, and categorize it as mental health struggles, right? Also, there's this aversion to saying that we're struggling at all with anything, right? Whether it's a project at work or with our children's behavior or connecting to our partner, we don't want to admit, most people don't want to admit that they're imperfect or having a hard time with anything because that vulnerability is really uncomfortable, right? They feel like it might be used against them. We haven't actually been taught as a society how to embrace vulnerability and what types of gifts actually come out of it, right? So there's a lot of elements of learning that I think are taking place. But yes, I think people are more apt to have the conversation. And I think that it is headed in a good direction because we can't deny it anymore. We have been put up against this beast of a situation on a you know, global scale, right? And it's us. It's impacting our health and well-being. It's impacting just our daily lives. So, you know, this is one of the, you know, areas that we need to keep exploring solutions in for sure. So Kimba, I don't want to misspeak here. You're not a counselor. You're a coach. Correct. And so you made an interesting point, And that is there might be more of a willingness for people to acknowledge that they're feeling more stress. Mm-hmm but it doesn't necessarily mean that they do something about that. Right. For those who are listening now who are really sensing that this is really impacting them in a, in a way that it's not healthy, what encouragement, what guidance would you give to those listeners to go ahead and take that step? Yeah, well, you know, first thing, any new move that we make is uncomfortable, right? If we're leaving our comfort zone, if we're doing something, anything for the first time, right? It's, it's going to feel scary. And that is so normal, right? I would definitely urge people to explore whether it's coaching or counseling on a level that they're comfortable with. You know, there's so many different services now, whether it's through your insurance or not, right? They've got so many virtual platforms for counseling and, you know, there's a difference between counseling and coaching too, which I think is important to mention. Counseling and therapy tend to really be focused on the past mm. and and sometimes the present, right? But and kind of making sense of events. And, you know, you do learn a lot about yourself in that environment. I am a huge fan of, of therapy and counseling. I've had many, many years of it and still have a wonderful therapist. Coaching is more future focused, right? Although some of those things from the past and present are going to obviously crop up, we are working towards achieving what you want in the future, right? Taking you from where you are to where you want to be. So it's very solution oriented, very goal oriented. And that's the main difference between coaching. So a lot of people don't want it. They're like, I don't want to open Pandora's box. I don't want to go to a therapist, right? But they're still not happy. They're still not fulfilled. Well, okay. Then you know, you're probably a better candidate for coaching then, right? And and vice versa, there are people who maybe need to look into their past before they're ready to move forward. So in my introduction, Kimberly, I introduce you as a mindset and resilience life coach. Yes. And those terms just kind of roll off my tongue. But for those who are listening or watching, share a little bit more about what does that mean? How do you help your clients? Yeah. Well, you know, when I first started, it was really about stress management and it was about anxiety. And, you know, that's another thing. A lot of people aren't ready to really say that they have anxiety. Although I think everybody experiences anxiety on some level these days, but 
then it became clear that really it was about mindset, the foundation of, of really developing a positive and resilient mindset, right? Um, my clients often come to me when they're just feeling kind of negative and stuck and they may not know exactly what needs work, right? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they know that, hey, my career is really dragging me down or my relationship is really dragging me down or I don't know what it is. I have this great life, this perfect on paper life, but I'm still feeling unfulfilled, right? A lot of that has to do how we look at our, our our life, right? And and our personal individual perceptions of what actually is there. Um, there's a there's a quote and it says that reality is always kinder than the stories we tell about it. I think it was Byron Katie that said that, right? Mm. So our reality, we can absorb it and then something happens inside our mind, right? We transform it, you know, maybe it's things from the past or just the way that like our specific lens of viewing the world and how we translate that data in our in our mind. So, you know, we do a lot of, you know, neuro-linguistic reprogramming type work and then a lot of stress management type work, but my my clients really do develop a more positive and resilient mindset instead of catastrophizing and thinking the worst and assuming the worst out of situations. They're they're more positive they are more apt to take risks and take on challenges, right? They have bigger confidence and, and better energy. So their thirst for life and just their overall fulfillment increases. And also their resilience when it comes to disappointments, they, they take things less personally. They, they aren't derailed by everyday disappointments, right? Which can really knock us down and keep us feeling stuck. And I think that over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of that, right? When we've, we've tried to remain hopeful and we've kind of collectively been hit with a lot of disappointments on a national scale and, and just with, you know, overall, you know, our society and where it's at. But yeah, my clients, they, they end up taking bigger risks, being happier in their careers, starting new businesses, having better relationships, leaving toxic relationships and, and feeling confident about their, you know, future for relationships and just being more present, more present individuals, more present parents. I think most people just want to enjoy the small moments and they feel like they're so distracted all the time that they can't even appreciate or enjoy what's right in front of them. So what are the biggest barriers in your experience for being more present? You mentioned the distractions. I, mean, I can rattle off what tends to distract me, but as you're working with clients, what are the things that really take their focus off that and makes it hard for them to be fully present? Yeah, well, I think that, you know, we, we are very distracted by our world around us and meeting the needs of the other people in our lives, right? And filling the roles that we have at work and at home and within our, you know, family networks and social networks. And then you're left with nothing for yourself, mm. Right. So I think that there's this mindfulness that needs to increase that, you know, we, we seem to have, we just want to check the boxes, right? We just want to get it done and say that we've, we've done all these things, but then we don't really feel, you know, worthy of the credit or anything like that. Well, that's because we've ignored the most important person in our lives, which is us. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so a lot of my clients, you know, are just emotionally and mentally burned out. So they need to set boundaries. They need to do more self-care. They need to implement strategies to course correct some of that negative thinking, but it all starts with you, right? You know, and we've, we've heard this, that, you know, if you got to put your mask on first on, on the airplane, right? You can't help anybody else unless you take care of yourself, unless you are in optimal health, unless you are doing the things that make you the best version of who you are, right? Otherwise you're just kind of running on fumes and feeding people scraps, right? So eventually those scraps are gonna run out. <laughs> you know, as I was listening to you, you may not have picked up on it. You used the word stuck twice, describing clients can you reflect on either an example where perhaps you got stuck or a client, of course, not mention names, got stuck, but 
once stuck, what did it take to get unstuck? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I've had several clients who, you know, they are doing just that. They are going through life, checking the boxes. They are doing what they need to do at work. They are doing what they need to do, you know, in their relationships or at home, but they're left with nothing. Right. So they feel stuck because they feel like they're doing everything, but getting nowhere. Mm. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. <laughs> and, and although they are doing a lot, right. It's, it's not that they're doing too much all the time. It's that they're doing too little of what they love. Right. Mm. They've neglected their own hobbies and interests. They've, they've kind of, been overcome by the monotony of daily life, right? So sometimes it's just as simple as infusing some new energy, right? Like going and doing something new, breaking up your schedule during the week, getting out of the house, you know, going on just a weekend excursion, right? Or just taking a day trip and just a drive somewhere to like break up the, break up the boring, <laughs> break up the boringness. Um, you know, that can be just enough to get a little energy back, right? I think we all can relate when we go out of town for a weekend, we can come back and we're like, man, yeah, I really needed that, mm -hmm. you know, just that change of scenery. But you need to do more of it, right? Like if you're, you can't just feed yourself breadcrumbs. So it's making it a hobby, making it a habit to continually be trying new things. And maybe you'll discover a passion that you had no idea about. I talk to a lot of people in their mid to late thirties, early forties, and, and even, you know, to 50 who, you know, have themselves to their careers, to their children and their families, and they don't know who they are anymore. Mm. They don't know who they are beyond their career and their family. They don't mm. even know what they like to do because, you know, they've just continued to kind of stay in that one place. Well, you have to take a step outside that box, right? You have to switch it up and it's not easy, you know, and it takes, I think sometimes a coach to kind of hold you accountable as individuals. We're not good at, you know, creating consistency with ourselves and holding ourselves accountable when it comes to new behaviors and trying to shift and, you know, create new behavior patterns that are more healthy and, and serve us in better ways. So that's one thing. Yeah. And then, you know, for myself, I think what has helped me get unstuck, and that is such a great question, is coming back to my desires. You know, we have been really told that wanting more is bad, right? Mm -hmm. That we should be satisfied and grateful with what we have. And if you want more, then we're greedy or, or ungrateful. And... I don't believe that. I think our desires were placed there for a reason. I think that they are there to guide us. And there's no reason that we shouldn't have it all. There's no reason we shouldn't have a fulfilling, meaningful career, a wonderful, satisfying partnership, an amazing family, and time to also give to ourselves, right? We should not feel like we are sacrificing our health or our sanity or one area for the other area of our life. It is possible to create harmony. So I always come back to my gratitude for what I have and then also my desire for more because, you know, I, I it's, it's in neglecting those things that I feel like that anxiety can build because there's something begging and calling for our time and attention and we're not giving it to it, right? Kimberly, we just uploaded an episode with Kevin Monroe and Kevin Monroe speaks on the power of gratitude, not only from a personal standpoint, but also how gratitude in an organizational setting mm. can really boost the culture. You know, yeah. Kimberly, you've been doing what you've been doing. The passion comes through kind of loud and clear. And I hope I don't put you on the spot here, <laughs> but you are modeling servant leadership. Thank you you are in a giving role. What do you do to make sure that you don't give out? How are you taking care of Kimberly? Yeah, well, gratitude is definitely a huge part 
of my day to day. I have a daily gratitude practice. I usually do it with my coffee in the morning. Excellent. So what I first do is I have my coffee and I usually have a daily meditation or a short reading that I do. And just, I reflect on that. And then I write out what I'm grateful for. You know, I do some journaling around that. And, you know, some days it's a little bit more robust and intricate than others. You know, I, I think a lot of people think, oh, I've got to write this big thing. Well, no, if you're grateful for the cup of coffee in front of you and the sunlight shining on your face, then that's great. You know, breathe into that, right? Feel that. You know, I I try and be really thorough and in depth with my gratitude so that I can feel all of it and just ingrain that in every cell of my being. I also make a desire list mm. and I also make a list about why I want those things and how wanting those things not only serves me, but serves the people around me and how, when I am supported by these desires and having those things in my life, I can actually show up in a bigger way. I can make a more, uh, a, a bigger positive impact on my community, on my clients, on, on my daughter right? I can show her what it means to be a happy person and care for herself. And so, so, you know, that is how I fill my cup first thing in the morning. Absolutely. You know, other ways I just, I self-care is something I'm doing consistently throughout the day. I think there's this notion that it has to be like, you have to earn your self-care, mm. <laughs> right? Or, oh, you know, next month I'll get a massage. Then, you know, I feel like I've earned it, right? Or I feel like, I, I think self-care should be just daily. You know, in the morning I'll have my coffee, my detox tea. I'll do my gratitude. I mo try and move my body, whether that's through yoga or going for a run. I try and get that energy up. And that keeps me in a positive mindset, right? Reflecting on my values and desires and what I'm doing this for. I think many of us get to a place where we're just going through the motions and we don't know why we're, we're, we've become disconnected from what am I, what's the point, right? And that's where a lot of people's mindset kind of goes downhill because they feel like their efforts aren't, aren't worth anything. As I'm thinking about what you just shared, I hope I heard these things correctly, but you talked about the, the, the value you have found starting your day with a, a cup of coffee to reflect intentionally yes. on gratitude, but not just reflect, but also to record. It doesn't yeah. have to be a lot, but to commit that to writing. But you added a dimension, and that is listing your desires. Yes. And listen, not because it's all about me, but by listing those desires, you're in a better position to, where appropriate, share those desires with those you love and you're around. And if they had some sense of what those are, and perhaps vice versa, the opportunity for deeper, more meaningful relationships is there. And as people are listening to this, I suspect what they're doing right now is thinking, my goodness, how do I, how do I do all that? But you've given us kind of a framework mm -hmm. for what you do. And it doesn't end just in your morning ritual. No. You, you, you kind of pepper your day with self care. And Absolutely. I, I can't stress how much that can make a difference, particularly in today's climate. We're staring at monitors in some form or fashion all day and into the evening. Yeah. And we're bombarded by social media where people are putting forth their best. And all you see is the perfected image. Mm. It's not realistic. It's not. Yes. You know, as we've been talking, we've covered a quite a bit of different things. We have. And that being said, you have so eloquently describe not only about who you are and what you do, but you've been very, very open. And we will be including the link to your website. But what I found before we had even met, when I went to your website, I just read it and I felt like I knew you immediately. Just that, that, that degree of openness. And I just found that very refreshing. So my first call with you, I was looking forward to it. 
I was obviously looking forward to us recording this podcast. As you kind of look back on the things that we've discussed, what are some things you want to make sure our listeners have as takeaways? Yeah, you absolutely are the most important person in your life, right? And, you know, I think that some people may hear that and think, you know, how could I possibly make myself the center of my life, right? And, but that, that, that is where start to shift, right? When we put that energy back on ourselves versus always pouring it out to these external places. And, you know, just that you are capable of, things that you have no idea about, right? Like it, that self-discovery process can be intimidating, but if you're feeling the urge, if you're feeling even just unfulfilled in any area of your life, right? What's the hurt or harm in having a conversation, right? You know, maybe you get to that conversation and you're like, yeah, you know, it's not for me and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't think personal development, I don't think everybody has to be obsessed with personal development. Let's just say that, right? I mean, we have, we don't always have to be setting goals and and striving for that next level, right? There is a, there's a happy medium in it. And there's also ways to really learn how to love where you are right now in your life, but stay curious, stay curious about yourself, stay curious about the things that maybe you once wanted for yourself, but you know, haven't really looked at in a while. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's a weird world out there now. You know, I think that we all have to collectively do our part and it really starts with us shifting what we do as individuals, right? It, it shifts the way that we want to live our lives and, and the daily practices that we do. And that, that translates then into employers giving their team members what they want, right? And things changing on a, on a big business level and just a supply and demand level. I mean, you think about it, even as consumers, If we all stopped buying junk food, they'd stop making it, (laughs) you know? So even those really small individual choices make a big impact or they can make a big impact, right? And I do feel like a lot of people are getting fed up with this culture of stress and burnout and giving to their employers and, you know, still struggling financially. And, you know, what do you do, right? Well, it starts with shifting things on our individual level. And I really firmly believe that everything will change around us. So Mm. stay curious. That's my biggest piece of advice and be good to yourself. I love it. Stay curious, be good to yourself. I'm confident we have listeners. This has kind of resonated with them. What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Sure. Yeah. Well, my website is encompasscoachingservices.com. And certainly there's ways on my website for you to book a free discovery call, even if you just want to connect and, and get a few takeaways from that and explore coaching for yourself and what it really, what, what are the possibilities for you in your life? You know, what are the things about your life that you're really loving and what do you think really needs some fine tuning? You know, we can dive into all of that and, um, then also I do quite a bit on Instagram and my handle is at Kimberly.brook, B-R-O-O-K-E dot Smith. So I do a lot of free content videos. I also have a private Facebook group, which is on my website called the Resilient Women's Society. And we do free monthly trainings in there, but yeah, one-on-one coaching. I've got a group program that's going to launch here in the new year. And so I'm excited. I would love to connect with anybody who you know, has, has felt this resonate or, or just wants to talk. If you're driving now and you're saying, Oh my goodness, I didn't get all that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. We're going to include links to everything that Kimberly just mentioned in the show notes. So be looking for those when we uh, upload this uh, episode, Kimberly, thank you. Of course. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Mike. This has been such a great conversation. I feel like we've touched on so many important areas of just individual life and and society. And it's been a real pleasure. So thank you. Well, it has been a pleasure for me as well. And I also want to thank our listeners for joining us today. Every Thursday, we upload the latest episode to all the major platforms. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. So if you're an entrepreneur with big dreams, but you're tired of letting your business keep you up all night, it's time to take action head to bench-builders.com to schedule a quick call. 
and we'll explore on that call ways to help you solve your people and process problems so you can again focus on growing your business. So I want to thank you for joining us and I hope you have picked up on some tips from Kimberly that will help you get unstuck and on target. Until next time.